Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Jonathan, and welcome back to Money Talks, where we want to offer you financial information and meet you where you are financially so that you're able to stick to your budget, manage to pay off your debt, and begin to save on your path to building wealth. Today, I want to help you start to prepare and think about what's necessary for you to apply for a loan. And I also want to offer you some of the underwriting perspective to help you understand why you need to make decisions in a certain fashion. If this is your first time joining me here on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So all too often, at some point in your life, you're going to have to take out a loan for typically a house if, if necessary. But many times you take out loans for many different things. So you have credit cards, you have personal loans, you have auto loans, student loans. There are many different things that you can take out a loan for. And obviously, I wouldn't want you to go to debt irresponsibly, but I do understand how taking out a loan and using these tools can help you start to move a little bit forward. So I want to run through kind of the main pieces of loan that you will have and offer you a little bit of underwriting perspective so that you understand why it's important that you know what you need on the front end. And that's the importance of applying for a loan. Don't apply for a loan and not know what you particularly need. Because the bank, not to be against you or anything of that nature, they're always gonna approve you for the most that they can give you based off what they calculate your scenario to be. So let's jump right into the option. Usually the easiest loan to apply for and get is the credit card. And the reason for that is, number one, the credit card has a high interest rate. Number two, the credit card, the money is locked there on the card. So from a security in instrument and from a risk perspective, the bank isn't taking as much of a chance with you and is willing to give you the opportunity, especially because again, they're charging you a high interest rate. They also have sometimes fees attached like annual fees, balance transfer fees, cash advance fees. Those are all things you want to pay attention to. But the basis for any loan is always going to usually come down to your credit history, and your income. So when you look at your income, it's one of those things of, oh, I make $50,000 a year or I make $40,000 a year, whatever the case may be. Well, when the bank looks at your income, it's basically looking at your income from a budget perspective of what do you have left in the month? Do you have what's called the ability to repay? The ability to repay means that if I give you this loan based off what your credit report states, based off any information that you've given us and your income plus your credit history, that tells us that, hey, it's highly likely that you'll repay this loan. The second piece is, do you have what's called the character? Are you willing to repay? So if something goes down, how important will this credit card bill or how important will this car loan or whatever you're applying for be for you to actually repay in your mind, in, in general mind? So those are things that people are kind of running through. So they're going to approve you again as much as they can based off their limits, based off your history, based off your income. And you also have to look at, okay, what do I actually need? So in the case of a credit card, that's probably offer you some leniency because your credit line can be 10, 11, even 30,000 worth of a limit, but that will actually, in most cases, improve your credit score, especially if you're a young, young borrower, meaning you don't have that much time with credit. But the way it impacts your credit when going forward with loans is if you're carrying balances, if you're carrying um, money over from month to month on the credit card, then that will impact your ability to apply for other loans. So maybe you want a personal loan or maybe you want an auto loan. The second loan I want to talk to you about is the personal loan. Now, oftentimes when you get behind on rent or you have a car repair that comes up and you just don't have an emergency fund for it or you have to make a quick trip the viable option for many in thinking is let me get a personal loan 
Well, personal loan, you have to understand there's no nothing holding that personal loan. It's literally the bank or credit union giving you cash. So most often when they're looking to approve you for a personal loan, they're looking based off, hey, what are your credit limits? What are your what kind of experience with credit do you have? Because there's no collateral involved with a personal loan, meaning you don't have a car and a credit card is not locked down in a certain way or in a house. You don't have a house that they can take back to repay the debt. You they have to really be stringent on how, who and when they give you a personal loan. A personal loan is probably one of the most difficult loans to get get if you have limited credit history. Because again, the amount of the personal loan that they're going to allow you to get approved for is typically that of your highest balance. So if you have a $5,000 limit on a credit card and you've been doing that for maybe a year and a half, two years, which is standard good payment history, that may actually qualify you or help you qualify for a $5,000 personal loan. But if you need $5,000 as a personal loan and you only have like $500 or $750 or even a $1,000 credit limit and maybe you never had a car loan or anything of that nature, that's where it gets a little tense where you likely may not even get the personal loan or if you do, they may offer you a small amount. The good thing is if you do have experience with it or even if you don't have experience with it, most people will allow you to get a certain amount. They'll test you out, so to speak, for a period of about six months. You make those payments for six months. And if that's enough to get you through for that time, you can typically go in and reapply for a larger amount to try to get yourself covered. That's just a, another tip. Again, a lot of this information is based off the underwriting experience, not what you see when you're going in online. So this is helpful or the idea is to hope is to help you set your mind right when you're thinking about what's going to be your best option for applying for a loan. The next option that I want to discuss with you is the auto loan. Yet so quickly and so easy is it to get an auto loan. It's often easier to get an auto loan than a credit card or a personal loan. And the reason for that is you have a car attached to it. Because if you default, they're going to come after the car. <laughs> it's going to happen. So one of the things you want to think about when you're applying for an auto loan is, again, the first thing is you have to determine what you want to pay. And if you go to a dealership, if you even go to a credit union, if you go to a bank, they're always going to see how much, what's the max you can qualify for. And in some cases, that max will take you to 15% of your income, 20% of your income. It can be a large portion of your income, especially if you don't have other bills like a credit card with a balance or other debt that you're paying. So it's really important that you follow the rules of my previous video that's saying, hey, I'm not going to pay all in costs, meaning gas, oil changes, potential repairs, the note, not going to do any of that over 8% of my income. And I want to pay this loan off in two years. Now I'm okay if you take out a five-year loan, but I would prefer for the discipline of it that you take out a two or three-year loan and that way you can ensure it will be paid off because you committed to it. Most people don't actually have the discipline to say, hey, I'm going to pay extra. And the idea, it does sound good. Let me obligate myself to less. And that way, if something comes up, I can still make the payment. But the fact is, when you give an opportunity for something to come up, it will come up. As we discussed in previous videos, every, no month is actually the same. So with the auto loan, this is what you want to look at. You want to look at the car. You want to look at the mileage. Some lenders actually have restrictions on what they will allow you to finance based off year, mod, not model, but year and mileage. So you want to pay attention to that. Is that car over 10 years old or is that car over 150,000 miles? Those are things you want to pay attention to and you also want to get the lender's requirements. 
Second thing you want to look at with the car is, again, how much is that payment going to take up? And even if you are taking that payment from your angle, do you have margin to pay for gas? Do you have margin to pay for uh, maintenance? Do you have margin to pay for oil changes? All those different things. There's a lot that goes into this piece. But if you don't do it because this work on the front end, when you go in, all the bank is looking at and concerned about is, are you able to make this payment? And that payment is just the car. It's not all the accessories that go along with the expenses of the car, the tax tag and title, all those different things. Maybe you're getting a warranty, gap, all those different things. So it's really important that you do that math on the front end. Know, hey, if I'm gonna spend a hundred a month in gas and maintenance and all that type of stuff, then I can only afford a 250 car note. That's what you have to go into the bank with the mindset of, I can only pay $250. And then you also only look at cars that will put you in that price range. The other thing is with a car, if it's your first car, it's usually not as much of a big deal as far as underwriting is concerned. Because your first car, you you have to have to get to work, you have to get around, so that car takes priority. When you have multiple cars, that's where a stronger credit history is necessarily needed to secure that loan. Because then they're looking at what is your character just because you have the ability to pay doesn't mean that you will pay. So they're looking at your experience. They're, how have you managed your money in the past? That's where a good credit history really comes in handy. The other thing is when you apply for an auto loan, things that can come up as far as your income. If you make bonuses or if you're paid through commission, be prepared to give them your tax returns for at least the last year or two years. If you're a business person, by default, if you're only paid through the business, be prepared to pay that, show your business taxes for the last two years. And yes, they will be looking for income. The challenge with business people when they apply is oftentimes you take the tax cuts and not anticipate the fact that you're going to have to make a purchase. You have to show income. So you're going to always have to provide your tax returns. And if you get in the habit of taking out a salary from your business, you'll always be prepared to make a good decision and be prepared for applying for a loan. Lastly, but definitely not least, the biggest purchase of them all, your home. Your home is probably the quintessential thing of buying in your lifetime. And it's important that you not only understand what type of loan you're getting in, but it's really important that you thoroughly prepare to buy this house. And the reason for it is, yes, you can sell a car, you can sell a house, but when you do those things, or if you have to come to selling a home, selling a house, it may not go as quickly. So the best thing you can do when purchasing a home is make the right decision as soon as you do the, uh, the loan in total. As soon as you buy the home, that's when you make money on the deal. This is so important. So with your home, you're gonna have to understand what is 25% of my income. 25% of my income, that means my HOA. That means my taxes and insurance. That means the principal and interest. That, that means everything that's included for that house. Now the home is a little tricky when you're thinking about 25% of your income because you want your home to go up in value, right? Yeah, so that next year, if it's going up in value, that may take you out of 25% of your income if your income doesn't go up as quickly. So keep in mind that taxes could raise, whether you're paying the taxes yourself or whether you're not paying, whether you escrow them with the PMI and uh, homeowners insurance, all those different things. When you're applying for a home, typically they're gonna look at or need your last two years taxes. The other thing they're gonna look at is, do you have at least two to three months of cash in the bank to be able to pay for this loan should something happen? 
So essentially, do you have an emergency fund? And not, do you have an emergency fund after your closing costs? Oh, I'm sorry, before your closing costs or with your closing costs. Do you have the money after you pay all the expenses of purchasing this house? Do you have the money left in the bank to be able to support the payment of this house for at least two to three months? So that's why in the industry now, what you're seeing from a real estate and when you're applying for loans and things of that nature, so many people are, do you have a 401k or do you have, they're looking at and validating all different types of income because they're trying to make sure that you have that cash available. And that's important for you when you're purchasing a home, you need to have a cash buffer on the side to purchase that home. Undoubtedly, after you pass, purchase a home some of the things that may come up is your taxes again will raise but maintenance you have to do maintenance on your home every year something will come up and it's important to get those things fixed very quickly because that's how you retain the value of your home as best as possible but again we're talking about underwriting in this video so the other thing you want to think about with your home is again if you have any car payments, if you have any extra loan payments, all those things are going to be taken in consideration. Even alimony, child support, if you're paying those things, those are become liabilities about how much home you can actually afford and buy. It's very important that you look at your situation before you go into a bank or credit union or speak to someone because or before you apply, ask that question. Hey, I'm trying to keep this thing at 25% of my income. The thing about real estate that I like is the laws are so stringent now that you're almost, you're not even, you're more encouraged to do the right thing than and afraid of the consequences of not doing the right thing. So just by, maybe you can't do the math yourself, just by you coming in and say, hey, I have to keep this thing at 25% of my income. If you know what 25% of your income is, your net income, then that's what home they can build you around. And then that's where you can start your approval process. So I hope this information is helpful. Again, there's a lot to buying a home or there's a lot to even applying for a loan. But the biggest thing that you have to do to prepare for the loan is, yeah, look at your income. Second, know how much you need to spend so that you can have a more effective cash flow after this bill is done. And then not get so entangled with what the banks do because the banks are different no matter where you go. Everyone calculates debt to income different. Everyone, some people might include credit card balances. Some people may not. Some people may take on uh, your student loan balances or auto loan balances. Some people may not. If you don't have any type of payment that's due, there's usually a re required minimum percent of the payment that each lender will have to take in order to qualify. So it's important that you have your ducks in a row. That's what I mean about being organized. Know your payments, know how much you make, know how much you can afford to spend, and then go apply for the loan. That's how you make real progress. And again, this is all about helping you maintain control of your finances. Because again, they're only pulling your credit report. And a lot of things aren't on your credit report that affect your monthly bills. So you have to be able to make an informed decision and hopefully this will help you sit back and think, hey, what can I truly afford or should I even be buying this at this point? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.